So I would be remiss. Mm -hmm. It is Dr. King's birthday. Mm. Yes. No, no coincidence that we're speaking on, on Dr. King's birthday, I would imagine is, you know, divinely oriented. And so I, I know he was, um, you know, a, a, a mentor and a inspiration in your youth. And it just so happened that you all were gathering on the day that he happened to be killed. Can you just reflect on King, whether it's that night or his work? I know you've touched a lot of his, his, his writings. Just talk a little bit about King and what he meant to, to Quince Orchard and to you. I think for Dr. King, some I've always looked up to his, his message, we think in terms of his I have a dream speech, but more than that, just in terms of the way in which he, he lived his life, he wasn't perfect, okay, but he was also a doer. He realized that there were things that were happening within society and that God had called him for that particular moment to use all of his gifts and graces to make a difference. And so he was able, he didn't do it without fear, okay? There were times when he, he was afraid of what was going to happen, but he realized that he was called for this particular time and therefore needed to go forward and ensuring that justice and righteousness was available to, at that particular moment, people of color, but extending rights for, for all people, okay? That was one of the kernels that came to me, came to us on that April 4th in 1968, when we had gathered in that room, talking about whether or not we we're going to come together and merge with these two other white congregations, and there was a great deal that was at stake, okay, for all of the congregations, but from our perspective in terms of what's going to happen to the legacy of those folk who came before us. And so th that the conversation was, was heated in the sense of all were vested in what was taking place there. And so as we're in the midst of those conversations to have the then pastor, Reverend Horton, come and knock on the door, along with my uncle, and then to tell us that Dr. King has been assassinated. Hush comes over the room because we are engaged in activities that in some ways are living into Dr. King's dream. And so as we're gathering around uh, the flagpole for a time of prayer, and Dr. Reverend Horton is praying that prayer as, as a as a 17 year old, I'm sitting here and, and I'm watching, focusing on him, not closing my eyes, uh, and I'm seeing tears trickling down his cheek. And in that moment, realizing that here's this white man praying for this black man. There's a realization that takes place that Dr. King was truly a drum major for justice, okay? That it wasn't just about rights for black folk. It was about righteousness and justice for all people. And so as Pleasant View and Nunting Hill and McDonald Chapel, as we're engaging in conversation, there was destruction that was taking place all around us. There was riots taking place in DC. I remember my cousin coming in from overseas and he, from the military, and he was seeing the city that he loved being torn apart by, by rioters. And yet in the midst of all of that destruction that was taking place, those three churches decided to come together and live into Dr. King's dream of a beloved community. That was the greatest tribute we could give to him, was living into that dream. 
and realizing along the way that it was not going to be easy, that there were going to be some people who were going to fall along the wayside, that there were going to be some sacrifices that were going to need to be made. There were going to be some friendships that would be lost. But we were creating something new and different and better, a beloved community. And in that moment, perhaps what was born was the reality that the Pleasant View Historic Site was too precious to lose because that is where the story is able to be told of how those three congregations came together, of how Fair Haven was created, okay? And that of the three sites, that's the only place that's still standing. So as you're driving along Route 28 and you look over, there's the legacy of those folk who came before in terms of African-American tradition, but there's also the legacy of those other two congregations. And this site is able to tell that whole story. Um, Dr. King for me is a symbol of hope for the world. We, you know, we keep referring to the I Have a Dream speech, but uh, he also spoke out against the Vietnam War. Uh, when the pandemic happened, when uh, George Floyd was killed, I, I went to the book, Where Do We Go From Here? Chaos, Our Community. What he speaks about in that writing speaks to exactly what's happening now. We don't go from here in terms of chaos. We go towards community. That's what finding fellowship is about, creating community.